Hey, 8th grade, this is some help with completing the square, including mysterious number 36. Alright, so this is number 30, which will give you a good review of how to complete the square and what do you do if you have a number here. So we're going to start with that. Right away, before I do anything, I'm just going to divide everything by negative 3. And I'm going to get x squared plus 4 equals, and let's see, 14 and negative 3. I believe that's negative, negative 4 and 2 thirds x, which is really not that bad. So first, I think I'm going to go over here and make this look a little better. Four t 3 times 4, negative 4 is negative 12, negative 14. That should be negative 14 thirds x. And over here I still have x squared plus 4. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I'm also going to add 14 thirds x. 14 thirds x to both sides. So that should end up with this. x squared, still x squared. 14 thirds x minus 4. Okay, everything looks good. Now, to complete the square, I have to divide this by 2, or that's the same as multiplying it times 1 half, which would be 14 sixths. Now, you know, I think I can simplify that. I think that will be 7 over 3, I believe. So I have x squared, still going to be there. <coughs> Divided it by 2, I should now need to square that. Now, I want to remember 7 thirds because I think to complete that square, I have x plus 7 thirds squared. Now, 7 times 7 is 49, 3 times 3 is 9. So I'm adding 49 ninths to both sides. That's the part that I forget. And we only need that to remember that that's what we're doing because really the factored form is right here so I know it kinda looks like that disappears but you're factoring it to get to this and we could run through that and see why that why that is what it is but that's where we are so I'm going to leave this over here for now and I'm gonna go mess with this now so 49 ninths I go to my magic calculator here, and I get 5.44, 5 and 4 ninths. could leave it like that. That might help because if I'm subtracting 4, that's 1 and 4 ninths. So I have negative 4 that was already here, 5 and 4 ninths. So I'm taking 5 minus 4 to get 1 and 4 ninths that stays there, all right? So now, here's what I have. The 1 and 4 ninths, what I have is x plus 7 thirds squared equals 13 ninths. And I want to take the square root of both of those. Now I have to pause to give myself some room. Now we take the square root of both sides. And I uh, forgot my plus minus over here. This will just be x plus 7 thirds. And this over here, back to my handy calculator. 13 divided by 9 is 1.444. But I need to take the square root of that. 
and I get plus or minus 1.2. And there was some other stuff there, but that's pretty much it. Now, I need to subtract 7 thirds from that, from each side. So, 7 thirds, that's negative 2.3333. And so I'm going to add 1.2 to that. So if I have negative 2.333, and I subtract 1.2 from that. That will give me negative 3.53. And then, if I take that, and if I add to it, I should get negative 1. Oh, I need the pen. Negative 1.133. See if my answers are right. And those are the right answers. Theirs are a little less picky, but hopefully. That gives you an idea of what to do on that. And we'll look at another one next. So here's number 40, similar again to number 30, because you have a number in front of your x squared. So I'm going to start by multiplying by the reciprocal to get rid of that, times 3 halves. And even though you can't tell this in the video, this is the second time I did it, because yes, the first time I did it, I got it wrong. Watch what I'm canceling. See, that's one, three, two, threes. So, everything's over here. I have x squared. Here, I have minus 2x. And over here, it looks like I have 5 over 4. And there you go. Now, 5 over 4, that's the same as 1.2. Wow, nice numbers. Let's try it again. Same as 1.25. All right. I can complete the square now. Divide this by 2. I will get negative 1. Now, I want to remember that because I'm eventually going to have that x minus 1 squared. So if I have negative 1 and I square it, I get 1. So I'm adding 1, adding 1. So now, 1.25 plus 1, that's 2.25. I think I did the same thing. Ugh. I'll show you the mistake I always make. I need to take the square root of this, plus or minus, square root of this. This is going to be x minus 1. And the thing I always forget to do is I always forget to take the square root of my number. So if I do 2.25 this is 1.5, plus or minus. I'm going to add 1, oh, forgot equal sign, plus 1, plus 1. So I have x equals 1 plus 1.5 is 2.5. 1 minus 1.5 is 0.5. So I should have, oh, negative 0.5. So I should have an answer of 2.5 and negative 0.5, and that finally is correct on my second try. So here's number 36, the one that you're missing some vital information for to do this. It just gives you this, and then it says, what is the area of the triangle? Well, I know that with a right triangle, I have the base times the height, and I have to divide that by 2. So if I multiply that, I have x 
times x plus 6 divided by 2. And that is x squared plus 6x divided by 2. Which doesn't really help you a lot because it doesn't actually give you any numbers. But there's this 30 sitting here going, hmm, why is that there? And that's where you need the thing called the Pythagorean Theorem. So the Pythagorean Theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this here, the side opposite of the right angle is the hypotenuse. That's the c squared part. So in this one, what they're saying is a squared, which is x squared, plus x plus 6 squared equals c squared, which is 30 times 30, 900. All right? So that's the Pythagorean theorem. a squared, b squared, c squared. Now, we need to multiply this out. x squared stays the same. x plus 6 squared. If I use the FOIL method, that should give me x squared plus 12x plus 36 equals 900. Hopefully you remember, see how to do that. Simplifying that, I have 2x squared plus 12x plus 36 equals 900. And I would divide everything by 2 to get x squared, 6x, 18, 450. Make some room. All right, now let's keep going. Minus 18, minus 18, x squared plus 6x equals, let's see, 450 minus 18. I believe that's 432. Time to complete the square. If I divide this by 2, I get 3. So I'm going to remember that x plus 3 is what I should end up with. And I think I'm going to say 3 times 3 is 9, so I have 9. I have to add 9 to both sides. So I'm going to get 441. Time to take the square root. I'm going to have x plus 3 equals the square root of 441. Now, I didn't think 441 was a square, but it actually is. So it's plus or minus 21. And I subtract 3 from each side. I have x equals, let's see, 3 minus 21. That would be negative 24. And negative 3 plus 21 would be 18. Now, I'm pretty sure you can't have a negative area. So, I'm going to use 18 as our positive answer. And now I have to go back here to my formula right here about the area, the base times the height, divided by 2. So I'll put 18, 18, and 18 squared back to my trusty calculator. That's 324. We're going up here now, people. 324. And 6 times 18. If I could touch the right numbers, that would help. That's 108 plus 324. Add that together. 432 divided by 2. I get 216. And I think that's Huh. Some measure doesn't say units squared. There we go. Hopefully that helps with everything.
send me an email if it doesn't.